Todd Viney, thanks very much for giving up some of your time to have a chat. Now, you are as connected to the Melbourne Football Club as anyone. You're a past player, past coach, staff member, and of course, father of a player. Does that make you just really heavily emotionally invested in this one? Yep. I think um, if there's anyone else more invested, I'd like to know. But no, it's, uh, yeah, I've certainly had a long history with the Melbourne Footy Club. So, um, I'm really excited about this uh, this game coming up, the grand final, and um, I'm not the only one. There's there's thousands and thousands of Melbourne supporters that are hoping for the best. Are you nervous as well? Has that sunk in yet? It's a longer break, so probably more time to deal with that. Yeah, no, I am. I am uh, you know, a little bit nervous. I am thinking about the the upcoming game, and it's hard not to get uh, wrapped up in it all. And uh, there's such a hype about the club um, thus far this year, and Past players are uh, led by Rod Grinter are out and about and lots of messages coming through. So uh, lots of well wishes. So it's hard to sort of switch off. It's probably a good thing that the players are in, uh, in WA, I reckon. You have played finals footy yourself. What were you like heading into matches? Yeah, look, I think um, my, I was lucky enough to play in a lot of finals. My first year was first time in 1987 when we broke that year break between playing finals so I was lucky enough to play a lot of finals um, and I was pretty good for most of the finals the grand final was one I got the most nervous for no nervous with and I remember being in the uh, the race about to run out for the grand final against Hawthorne in 1988 and I felt like I was going to vomit so I don't think I uh, probably hurt myself um, that well for the grand final but generally in finals themselves um, I sort of handled it pretty well. How is it now, I guess, watching sitting on your couch, can't even attend games when you're so used to being there and being a part of it? Yeah, no, um, so I've been on the farm for two years now and out of the game and it's certainly a lot different. Um, it'd be different again if you actually could go to the games, you know, probably since I finished at the club, I saw the Richmond um, Richmond Anzac Heat game. And apart from that, that's been the only game I've seen really in two, two years live. So watching on TV is um, a different experience. Watching with family members is a different experience. It hasn't gone that well, really. I've been banished to watch it by myself. Um, so I watch it up in the bedroom or wherever the rest of the family isn't. I watch the game and depending on how we go, I'll uh, turn the volume off and just watch it quietly and go down and see the cows at halftime if we're not going that well. But uh, it's been a different experience. Do your emotions ride heavily with Jack or is it more the team as a whole? It's still the team as a whole, but um, probably, you know, since I've been not with the, with the club in a formal role, when you're looking at things pretty well in a big picture point of view, you, you know, I didn't really, you know, you sort of notice what Jack's doing, but you don't get that wrapped up in it. But since, you, you know, you're out and you don't have that overarching role uh, with the bigger picture stuff, you do seem to focus more on your on your your son and um, sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not so good. He was certainly good last weekend, had a massive game. Do you feel like he's someone that's just built for finals? Well, I think, um, you know, in finals times, com competitors come to the fore and uh, the game's a lot more physical, a lot more contested. Um, so that certainly is in his wheelhouse. Um, he's had a little bit of it, you know, once again, another injury interrupted year so he hasn't had full fitness but I think um, the, since the suspension he's got some continuity and he's got some form and the last two finals have been pretty solid. Are you proud just watching how far he's come obviously many years ago he was running around in the rooms as a as a toddler and now he's a vice captain of a club about to compete in a grand final. Yeah no it is I'm very very proud of him he's very proud of his uh, his efforts and what he's been able to achieve it's great uh, seeing the journey he's been on. Um, I think he plays his 150th game this week also in the grand final. So 150 games. And uh, I've said to him that, uh, you know, probably hasn't been the smoothest, smoothest ride for the first 150 games, both from a club and uh, winning games of football and, uh, you know, from a personal point of view with his body, he's had a few challenges. So... Hopefully the next 150 a lot uh, a lot smoother with more wins, the club in a better position, and his body's pretty good. There must have no doubt been some pressure on him coming in, being a father son, and a lot of expectation. How do you feel like 
he handled that heading into the AFL? Yeah, we had probably a double whammy. I mean, father, son's one thing that he's got to carry, but then all of a sudden having your, your old man at the footy club is probably another another level. So he's had a double whammy of it. But I think overall he's he's handled that pressure really well. He when he got offered, uh, you know, what number do you want and lots of stuff. Do you want number twelve? Would you be interested in number twelve? He said, "No, I'd, um, you know, I'm happy to make my own mark." And I think that's what he's done so far in his 150 games. He's He's done it his way and, um, and we've been really proud of what he's done. Absolutely. Obviously, big game against the Bulldogs. They look pretty dangerous against Port Adelaide. What do you make of this matchup? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the, the two teams are in really good form. Um, two different build-ups to this game. So that's, uh, that's sort of like an unknown, really. Um, and they play twice during the year and it's one all. So it's, uh, it's a classic... Uh, uh, contest, you know, both teams have got very strong midfields um, and um, they know each other's games pretty well, I'd, I'd suggest. So I've had this two weeks to, to get a really uh, dig in even deeper to knowing each other on tape, I'd suggest. But I think we're in a, you know, a good position. I think we match up really well for them. I think last time we played them, they had a nearly world record uh, scores from their forward 50 stoppages from a few... Uh, lapses of concentration, I'd suggest. So I think we're in a really good position uh, to, to uh, challenge them and, uh, and hopefully win it. Should be a great game. Looking forward to it. Todd, thanks very much for your time. Great to hear from you. No, good on you, Ben. Good luck.